going, you dozy eh? But I'm not paid down your money, you know. Aye, and I'm not paid to cook and serve. Oh, we aren't half busy. What we could do with is an extra pair of hands. Kathy, Kathy. Biff brought when I left the house. Why don't you ask him to come and help out for an hour? Marlon, we'll cope. Oh, you're a glutton for punishment, you aren't you? Biff won't mind lending that. Really, we'll be fine. Ah, I get it. You two have had a row. Uh, no, uh, well, just a misunderstanding. All right, all right, I'll go and talk to Biff. <laughs> uh, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, no, I'll ask Rachel if she can take Alice to school oh, for no. me. Is that wise? Surely you don't believe all the rubbish about the drugs? No, no, of course I don't. Rachel's a sensible girl, but other folks have been pointing the finger. So? Well, well, while Rachel is still under suspicion, tongues might whack about you letting Rachel take Alice to school. <gasps> Rachel's my friend, so if local gossips are having a go, all the more reason for me to show my trust in her. <sighs> I'm not looking forward to seeing Miss Strickland. She spent all yesterday giving me the cold shoulder. I'm sorry, it's my fault. Rachel, it's not. You're completely innocent. Shame Miss Strickland can't show more faith in you. You know, you were talking about moving away. You weren't serious, were you? It's an option. Why is it an option? You said yourself that I'm innocent. If we move away, what's that going to say? Anyway, this is my home. All my friends are here. You don't seem to be getting much support from those so-called friends. What do you mean by that? Well, there's, there's hardly been a constant stream of them at the front door asking how you are. At least think about a move. It might be a good time for us to start fresh somewhere. I've always fancied living by the sea. That'd be wonderful for Joseph. This is my home, Graham. We don't want to duck out of this. I've never taken drugs, and I don't want to leave this village until I prove that. But how are you going to prove it? I don't know. William, you're scaring me. It's as if you're losing faith in me. I know you're innocent. I just want you to realise how difficult it's going to be to convince other people of that. I, I think I'm going to go for a walk, try to clear my head. Come on, Joseph. I'll go see you. Kathy or something. She's not being round either. See you later. Take care. And don't worry. Hey, up. Still with us, then? Well, you know, hanging on. Oh, uh, got you a bunch of grapes. To go with your healthy new lifestyle. Is this where you say I told you so? Yeah, well, I did. He took no exercise, ate far too much fancy rubbish and spent the rest of your time getting totally stressed out with life. You were an accident waiting to happen. You're a right Job's comforter, you are. Thanks for coming. Al, it was a warning. Heed it. Well, it's all very well for you to preach. You don't have the responsibility of owning your own pub. Nobody gave me the chance. But you can't help getting stressed out. And I'm worrying about it now. Oh, Al. You're flaming useless. Just remember something. You're never going to hear a person on a deathbed saying that they wish you spent more hours at the office. But it's my pub. Uh, and with Mandy away, there are just two young women responsible for the whole operation. That place is my pension, Terry. I can't afford for it to go wrong. Do you want me to give you an hand? Look out for everything. The last time that happened, I came back to a burnt-out pub. How long are you going to hold that against me? Oh. Well, you've got your security job, anyway. Aye, I know, but, uh, well, to be honest, uh, the money'd come in handy. Things are a bit tight at the moment. Oh, Terry, when are you going to get yourself sorted out? Do you want me to give you an hand or not? Well, you do know the ropes. All right, go on, then. Oh, don't sound so enthusiastic. If there's one thing I do know, it's how to run a bar. Look, you just get yourself well. Now I'll sort out these lassies. Yeah, but just remember one thing. Bernice is the manager now, not you. You know me, Al. Never want to rock the boat. <coughs> oh, I'm surprised to see you up so early. What do you mean? Ah, I thought all you druggies stayed in bed till midday, sleeping off your hallucinations. <laughs> Listen, Eric, I've never taken drugs in my life. 
I've not even smoked a cigarette. These accusations are ruining my life. And the last thing I need right now are cheap cracks from the likes of you. Come on. It's only a joke. Hiya. I'm just going to see you. Uh, Rachel, can you do me a favour? Can you take Alice in? I've got a couple of things that need sorting out. Oh, I was kind of hoping we could have a chat. I could uh, do it with a friendly ear. Yeah. It's a bit difficult right now. Is it OK with Alice? Yeah, I suppose so. Thanks. Have a good day. See you later. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cathy. I'm not in the mood to talk about you and me or Chris. Actually, I came to see if you'd help out in the diner for an hour. Well, that's right, Cathy. You'll get your priorities right. Look, Beth, you're not the only one who's angry. I'm not particularly happy that you're so quick to believe Chris's version of things when you won't even listen to mine. So you deny you spent a night in a hotel with him? No, but absolutely nothing happened. I think this is all getting a bit ridiculous. Excuse me? Was I the one that went blabbing to her ex-husband about our love life? And obviously how dull you find it. You want to know what I really said? What's the point? The fact remains that you just... you talked about our intimate secrets. All right, Biff, I made a mistake. I had one drink too many. I didn't realise what Chris was scheming. But I tell you one thing, what he told you is a load of rubbish. I was singing your praises. You know, how much of value the, the comfort and security of knowing you so well. Oh, you make me sound so excited. What's the point in trying to explain if you're not prepared to listen? Will you come and help out? OK. But I'm telling you now, Cathy, you are way out of order. This is a long way from being sorted out. Just a mineral water, Tricia, when you're ready. How are you coping without Alan? I've been brushed off my feet. You ain't amped up 12 crates of mixers or changed the barrels. This is madness. We need more staff pronto. All right. When I get a minute, I'll sort some it out. My name's Jesus. Sounds ever so reassuring. Trisha, it's all hands to the pumps. And it is for your granddad's sake. So a little less whingy will be greatly appreciated. How about you giving us a hand? After all, you just wet Sundays. <laughs> I'm not sure what God would think of me, uh, moonlighting as a barman. Oh, I don't want to get you into trouble with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Bernice. Oh, this is getting beyond a joke. You're going to have to call an agency or something. Stay calm. I've already organised some help. Back the line. Oh, you can cut the atmosphere in here, we are now. Uh, I wish they'd make up or break up. The tension's unbearable. Well, I love them both dearly. But this better not start happening on a regular basis. I mean, do you fancy working in this atmosphere every day? You know, if Chris could see us now, he'd be laughing his socks off. You obviously believed all that garbage he told you, so Chris is going to win. Why did you talk to him about us in the first place? It's none of his damn business. Listen, stupid, I spent hours telling Chris what a wonderful guy you are. Cathy, I'm trying to take an order. Isn't it obvious to you what Chris is doing? He's doing his level best to split us up. Mm, with more than a little help from you. But if will you listen to me? I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I will never talk to Chris about us ever again. Fine. Oh, come on. I really care for you. Here. Well, I told Al I'd bail you out. Not a minute too soon. That cellar's a right mess. Very kind of you, I'm sure, but it won't be necessary. My fiance Gavin's going to help out. Well, that's news to me. He's arriving tonight, so everything's under control. Thank you, Terry. Eh, you might wreck it, love. But Al wants me here, and here I'll stay. Terry, may I remind you that I'm the manager of the wall pack, and I say you're not required. You've heard what your thuggish boyfriend's been getting up to. Mm. So I'm here. Kathy, there's no need to come over here and sort things out for Biff. It shouldn't be you who's apologising. And don't worry, 
I'm not pressing charges. I'm here to say sorry. That he didn't hit you harder. You are a rotten, conniving schemer. I've been an idiot to think you could change. I know exactly what you're up to, and it had better stop now. I don't know what he's been telling you, but I am the injured party here, you know. He attacked me. Do I need to spell it out? You're trying to split me and Biff up. I don't know what you're doing with him anyway. The bloke's got a peanut for a brain. Let's cut the games, Chris. You're trying to get rid of Biff in the hope that we'll get back together again. OK. Cards on the table. You know I've never got over you. Well, you'll have to try, because from now on I don't want you near me or Biff. What can he offer you? I like him a lot, and I will not allow you to ruin things. The man's allowed. You'll come to your senses sooner or later. I'll still be here. Let me try and explain this in words you'll understand. Chris, I wouldn't get back together with you if you were the last man on Earth. But I love you. You don't know the meaning of the word. Spying on my past again? No. Those pictures are mine and therefore none of your business. Graham, what's the big problem? I'm just looking at some pictures of your wife. I mean, it's not as if you've got anything to hide, is it? Don't you start. That's what Rebecca's parents said to me at the inquest. Why had she gone downhill so quickly? Why hadn't the antidepressants helped? What was I hiding? Look, I've obviously hit a raw nerve. Let's just forget it. Her family turned against me. Is that what you're going to do? Graham, where's all this coming from? I can see it in your eyes. You're just like all the others. Are you all right? All I've tried to do is be the perfect partner to you, help and support you. And now you just throw it all back in my face. Graham, I was only looking at some photographs. Why are you hell-bent on trying to dig up my past? I'm not! I was just curious, that's all. You always gloss over your life with Rebecca. I'm not saying for a second that I believe you had anything to do with what happened to her. Look, can we just leave it behind us? Now's not the time to row. I'm going for a walk. I don't like the atmosphere in here. Hello, Alan. How are you feeling? Bored out of my head. <laughs> it's lovely of you to come. Well, there's something wrong if two old friends can't get together over a mild heart attack. Zoe, I'll tell you a secret. I was so scared of dying. Who wouldn't be? Well, after everything had stabilised and the doctor had gone, the, the nurse gave me some sedatives, but I couldn't nod off. I was scared of closing my eyes. I just, just cried for hours. Hey. So I, I was so full of self-pity. I lay here frightened, full of regrets thinking about the life that I'd wasted. Don't be ridiculous. I was scared of dying, but I realised I was also scared of living. I've always bottled out. I should have gone to America with Joe. I should have made my marriage work, my relationship with my kids, but I never fought hard enough. I, I just gave in. Because... I'm scared of life. Isn't that terrible? No, Alan. I think uh, most of us feel the same as you. 
It's frightening being brave. We all wish we could be, but... Well, listen to yourself, Zoe Tate. You're one of the bravest people I know. <sighs> Me? You've been honest with the world about being lesbian. It can't have been easy for you here. Zoe, don't be like me. Don't end up full of regrets. Don't bottle out. If there's something you want, or somebody, go for it. Ta-da! What do you think? Oh, Scott, very nice indeed. They must think an awful lot of you. Lads your age don't normally get given a car like that. I do the business for them, don't I? What do you think, Kelly? It's a car. Oh, are we just a little bit jealous? Oh, give me a break. Come on, take us for a ride, then. Step inside. Hi, you as well? I must die. I'll uh, show you the back seat later. <laughs> You're disgusting. Kelly, come back! Whiskey, please. Make it a double. Life's an international drugs baron. Get into you, is it, eh? <laughs> what? Just my little joke. Yeah, well, I'm not in the mood. Weird this, uh, Rachel business, eh? How so? My two pennies? I don't believe for a second that the drugs belong to her. Thought you were the one who said she was guilty as sin. Well, perhaps I was a little too hasty in my judgment, eh? I should have realised that Rachel's far too straight. Doesn't even like cigarette smoking. So what's your point? Well, I mean, Dr Watson, that somebody planted the drugs on her. I heard do a thing like that. Well, we've thought long and hard about this. Obviously, someone who bears her a grudge for some reason. Thanks. Or, um, someone who wants to get her sacked. Like who? Someone who doesn't want her to work at the school anymore, for whatever reason. It's just probably some childish practical joke. <laughs> childish? I'm not so sure. I think someone's really trying to make life difficult for you, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, we well, don't know what you're talking about. Um, like another? I've got to go. You see, what Vic would have wanted is for me to be self-sufficient, you know, running my own business, just like him. But you're too young to set up on your own. Age isn't important. Ambition is. But it's a big risk. All I need is some capital. Scott, don't run before you can walk. You're in a good job and you're doing well at it. True, but I could be doing better on my own. See, I want to achieve something that would make Vic proud of me. You know, a, a tribute to his memory. Oh, Scott, that's a lovely thought. And it would be kind of fitting if Vic's money helped set up the whole thing. He would have liked that. But do you know what you're doing? <sighs> Look, if it makes you feel any better, I'll, I'll go to an advice agency or something. And I've got a mate who's going in with me, and he's got a lot on house. What I really could do with is your advice. Oh, sure. Well, OK. Show me your plan, and we'll take it from there. Look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have flown off the handle at you. You touched a raw nerve. But it's also made me realise that it's high time I started to cope with my past. It must have been awful when your wife died. If someone takes their own life, it... You must want to blame yourself. Oh, and I do. Was there something more I could have done to help Rebecca? Something I could have said that might have just pulled her back from the brink? Have you ever had counselling? Rachel, it, it all happened over three years ago. There's a lot of water gone under the bridge. Obviously not for you. You could really use some expert advice. Really? There's no need. I'm sure I can get over it. With your help. All right, 
then, here's another thing. He never rings her, she always rings him. So? So, she could be talking to the speaking clock for all we know. But he's coming here tonight. We'll see. Cathy came round to read me the right act. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, the harder I try, the more I seem to scare her away. Excuse me a minute. Hi. Look, I, um, I just wanted to say sorry. What for? Well, for whatever I said the other night. Just please forget it. I already have. Oh, only I was a little drunk. <laughs> a little? OK, a lot. So is Maggie not with you, then? She's working. Oh, so where's your fiancé got to, then, Bernice? Oh, forgot to tell you. Gavin can't make it tonight. He's been held up on the rig. Is that right? I rang him. He said the weather was horrendous. Oh. Good job I'm here, then. Great. Two barrels need changing. What did I tell you? I'm gonna go. I'm suddenly not in the mood for socialising. Great. Leave me by myself, why don't you? You'll cope. You're a big boy. Could we have a word? What's left to see? Well, I've been meaning to come round. Maybe this punch has finally knocked some sense into me, because I've been a complete idiot. I disagree with that. Get scotch, please. I'm being honest with you now. I realise what a fool I was to try and relive the past. Cathy and I are history. It's a shame I didn't see it earlier. Mm, it certainly is. I know now that you and I are the future, Laura. Sincerely, I've realised just how strong my feelings are for you. So I take it Cathy's well and truly kicked you into touch, then? Do you really think I'm that tacky? Oh, I know you are. Let's face it, if you still stood any chance with Blondie, you wouldn't be here now talking to me. No, you've got me all wrong. Oh, I don't think so, Chris. Perhaps we could go back to your cottage and chat about this? No, no, I don't want you in my house again, ever. Oh, please, Cathy. Laura, I just want to sort all this out. You don't get it, do you, Chris? I actually believed you cared for me. Now it's clear I was only ever the consolation prize. That's just not true. Look, I'm not stupid. And now you've come crawling back because Cathy doesn't want you. Well, tough. I wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. You're on your own now, Chris. 